Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you. PM Modi arrives in France with defense ties in focus. Overflowing rivers bring chaos in Pakistan and India. And Nepal bans non-essential flights by helicopters after deadly crash. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday arrived in French capital Paris for a two-day visit. In a rare occurrence of inviting foreign dignitaries, French President Emmanuel Macron has invited PM Modi as the guest of honour for the annual Bastille Day Parade. Both leaders are also scheduled to hold delegation-level talks over an array of topics. Ahead of the meeting, India's Defence Acquisition Council has approved the procurement of 26 Rafale M fighter jets and Scorpion-class submarines from France. The visit coincides with the 25th anniversary of the strategic partnership between both the countries. With concern of growing assertiveness of China in the Indian Ocean region, India and France are expected to announce high-profile defence deals and a new joint plan. Well, ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations and India on Thursday urged a strengthening of strategic ties to tackle global challenges amid the bloc's annual ministerial conference in Indonesia. India's Foreign Minister S. Jai Shankar confirmed the recognition of ASEAN centrality and stressed its importance to the nation's vision in the region. The meeting noted progress in comprehensive strategic partnership with focus on digital, fintech, food security and maritime domains. ASEAN is a crucial pillar of India's Actis policy and its vision for the wider Indo-Pacific. A strong and unified ASEAN plays an important role in the emerging dynamic of the Indo-Pacific. India firmly supports ASEAN centrality. Also, the annual meetings, which also includes major powers such as China and Russia, come as doubts mount over the credibility and unity of the bloc in dealing with the region's thorniest challenges. The grouping will also hold the East Asia Summit and the ASEAN Regional Forum on Friday. And the overflowing rivers following heavy rainfall have brought a chaos in Pakistan and India, forcing hundreds to leave their homes along the river banks. A report. More than a thousand villagers living along River Sutlej in Pakistan's Punjab province were evacuated from their homes on Wednesday after local authorities issued a warning as the river breached the danger mark. Disaster management authorities had issued a high alert warning that low-level floods were expected in at least nine towns and villages in Kasur district. Reports suggest that since late June, more than 80 people have been killed in Pakistan in rain-related incidents. The country's monsoon season usually begins in the first week of July, lasting until mid-September. Sir, we have been going for a half hour. 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 Meanwhile, overflowing Yamuna River in India created a chaos in Indian capital New Delhi. Huge traffic jams were witnessed in many parts of the city as people waded through flooded roads to reach their destinations. This year, heavy rainfall has already left a trail of destruction in India's Himachal Pradesh, Punjab and Uttarakhand states. The worsening situation of Yamuna has also forced hundreds of labourers and farmers to leave their makeshift huts near its banks in Delhi. पिछले एक हफ्ते से बारिश होने की वजह से जमुना के अंदर बहुत पानी भर गया है जिसकी वजह से हजारों हजारों जो जमुना में किसान रहते हैं मजदूर रहते हैं वो सब ऊपर रोड के ऊपर आ गए हैं उनके लिए हम कल भी शाम को लंगर लेके आए थे और आज भी आपके सामने पूरा लंगर का ट्रक लेके आए हम और इनके इनको जितने भी ये लोग हैं इनको हम लंगर खिला रहे हैं तीनों टाइम का well, Taliban Supreme Court in a statement on Wednesday announced that four people, including a woman, were publicly flogged for allegedly committing immorality in the Pagman area. 
The court said the four people were sentenced to imprisonment for three months and were publicly lashed in the presence of government officials and some common people. Afghanistan witnessed public lashings and deaths by stoning during the previous rule of the Taliban from 1996 to 2001. Since seizing power again into 2021, the group has resumed physical punishment. It says its rules are in accordance with the interpretation of the Islamic law and Afghan customs. And amid the tussle between Bangladesh and United States, Under Secretary for Human Rights Urza Zaya reiterated her country's hope for free and fair elections in Bangladesh. Local news agency UNB reported. Zia, who met Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina earlier on Thursday, discussed issues related to human rights and fair elections in Bangladesh during her interactions with top authorities, reports suggest. Washington in May this year had implemented visa curbs for Bangladeshis who disrupt election process in their home country, which many believe is aimed at the current Sheikh Hasina administration. Criticizing the decision, Russia, China and Iran have termed the move as interference in Bangladesh's election process. The U.S. has defended by saying it is part of desire for genuine democratic process as a friend and partner of Bangladesh. Why anyone would object to us calling for free and fair elections, um, I will note that the, the Prime Minister of Bangladesh has repeatedly stated her own commitment to free and fair elections. It's a desire that we share. Uh, as a friend and partner of Bangladesh for over 50 years, um, we do not support one political party over the other. We support a genuine democratic process. And after the deadly helicopter crash on Tuesday, Nepal Civil Aviation Authority has banned helicopters from conducting non-essential flights. The decision will restrict helicopter operations for mountain flights and load operations till the end of monsoon in September. The Civil Aviation Regulator has also formed an investigation committee to find what caused Tuesday's crash in which five Mexican nationals and a local pilot lost their lives. The Himalayan nation, which is home to eight of the tallest mountain peaks, including the Mount Everest, has a history of air crashes as many airlines fly to small airports in remote hills and near peaks often shrouded in the clouds. And ahead of the launch of Chandrayaan-3, a team of scientists from ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization, offered prayers at the Tirupati Temple in Andhra Pradesh state. The Chandrayaan-3 will take off on Friday with its lander and rover from the Satish Dhawan Space Center. The scientists were also seen carrying with them a miniature model of Chandrayaan-3 for blessings before the launch. Okay, third mission to moon. And ahead of every mission, a team of scientists visits the temple to seek blessings. The mission aims to land softly on the lunar surface, making India the fourth country after the U.S., Russia and China to do so. If everything goes well, the Chandrayaan-3 will become the world's first mission to soft land near the lunar south pole. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see the same time tomorrow. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.